Uh, Amy Marks, course, Chris Ranji on KMOX. Uh, what in the hell? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Uh, Apparently, that's music that gets in your brain and doesn't leave man, your the brain. Man, the fish song got stuck well, in my head. Well, that's because you're, there's something wrong with you. But I know there is something wrong with me. And the founder and clinical director of the Brain Performance Center, Lee Richardson, who has been on the show a number of times before, joins us today. I, I am very fascinated in earworms and why mm -hmm. they happen. That's why we want to talk to you, Lee. Well, ear earworms aren't near as bad as they sound. They're really just those catchy tunes that get stuck in your head and they repeat in your head. And, you know, a lot of people have them. And for like two-thirds of the people that do have them, they're either neutral or positive. But some people are, find them annoying and disturbing. I mean, I can remember when Don't Stop Believing, that Journey song, got oh, yeah. stuck in my head after the tornado blew down my office. And after a couple of weeks of it, I, I'm like, okay, I need a reset. I need a new song. So Why? how did it get stuck? Did you hear after it or were you thinking to yourself, don't stop believing, I'll rebuild? Yeah, is there a correlation yeah. between the tornado and that song? I think there is. I really do. I think that was my subconscious saying, don't give up, Lee. Um, but it's so funny because I heard that song <laughs> the morning I was driving to my office. To, to check it out, but we all we all get them, um, and I think you know it's so interesting to me because I think what causes them because I look at everything from a brain standpoint, and we have brain networks that that are involved in perception and emotion and memory and spontaneous thought, and I think those earworms they get caught on one of those networks and they go round and round and round. You know, and the, some people say that when they're really relaxed, they will, when they're feeling really good in that low attentive state, floating, those earworms will come in. And other people will say that when they're really stressed out, their brains, you know, will, will hear a song and will latch onto it um, and stick with it. So they come and go differently. Okay, well, here's my problem. It's not necessarily about catchy music. Mm -hmm. I get them all the time. And sometimes it's just one of the last songs I listen to. And it's just I, I will go to sleep and it's in my head. And then I'll wake up and it's in my head. And then it slowly fades over the course of like three or four days. And it could be something, it, it could be a song that um, I have on my playlist. It could be a theme song to a TV show. And it happens all the time. It's not just occasional for me. So what's wrong with my brain? Well, Chris, do you have a, ma a musical background? No. Okay, because people that do are more susceptible to them. Oh, so, maybe okay. I should have. Well, Chris, let me ask you this. This is a harder question. Do you have a little bit of obsessive <laughs> compulsiveness in your personality? Yeah. What, what is that? What am I obsessive about? Everybody's telling me that I am. You're a clean freak. No, I'm not. A germaphobe. Well, a little bit. Yeah. I don't like to touch bathroom door handles. So What about what? obsessively <laughs> averse to commitment? That's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, people that have those obsessive compulsive, you know, parts in their personality are a little more prone to them, too. So you may, you probably are more likely to fall prey to that earworm. Mine, I have the same thing. It's not constant, but the song doesn't have to be catchy at all. And it will get stuck in my head. This is very specific. I'm not trying to be rude, but uh, like when my grandma died, um, there was a funeral and um, it was at a, a Catholic church. So they have like the responses, you know, the songs and then the prayers and the responses. And I'll get the responses stuck in my head. And it's not exactly like those are radio songs or catchy music. What's the science behind a non-catchy song getting stuck in your head? Well, Amy, now here's something to think about. Each time your music repeats itself, you can learn something different. Was there some learning taking place from that? Hmm. I, I mean, I, did you learn anything? I'm, I don't think I learned anything. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to be positive. I mean, I no, unless maybe it's because it's a song that was associated at a time where you have strong feelings. Would that mm -hmm. stick in your that, head more? That, 
that very I think that could just like with me and the tornado losing my office oh, yeah. and don't stop believing. I mean, so I do. You know, I think that earworms. A lot of people think earworms mean that they're crazy, and it's and it doesn't. It's normal to have earworms. And so, you know, both of you guys, next lady, guy, next time that happens, one thing you can do is try chewing some gum. Really? I've gum? That, I've read that that interferes with hearing the song in your head. Now, I haven't tried it, but there's something to, because Chris, you get them all the time. Yeah. So there's something to try. Oh. And I'm sure you've tried just, you know, distracting yourself. The worst thing that you can do is fight them. Really? That, okay. What would be a, what would be an example of fighting it? Just um, trying to block the song out. Because mm -hmm. what I do is and, I I try to think of a different song in the moment to see if it will uh, make the other one go quiet, and it doesn't always work. That's fighting well, it. Well, I don't know that that's fighting it because in a way that's distraction. You're trying to distract yourself from the song. the The other thing that someone mentioned to me that sometimes we're, when we get a song stuck in our head, it's because that we only remember part of a song. Mm -hmm. And they suggested that you hear the entire song and that, that might get rid of it. Huh. See, I will purposely not listen to, and this is, this is what I do. I will not listen to any music before I go to bed yeah. that has um, lyrics in it. Any music with vocals, I won't. I think you're answering your own question about the <laughs> compulsive uh, uh, habits or inclinations because you do seem hyper fixated on this. I am. I bet it's not as big of a deal to 99% of the people listening as it is to you. Oh, so am I doing what you do and I use the, our yes, guests as I a personal therapist? I think you're therapist? having a personal session right now. Lee, thank you for letting everybody <laughs> listen to our personal... <laughs> you're not... So, so Chris, you just got to get out of your head, man. Okay. Okay. Does this uh, does this session is this covered by my insurance? It is. It's funny. There are certain songs. Uh, uh, there's the the Fileo Fish and the Cars for Kids songs. I apologize for even bringing that up. Those will get stuck in my head. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lee. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for visiting. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for visiting. <laughs> Thank you so us. much, guys. Did we solve any? So what we figured out is that I'm OCD and I didn't know it. That's what we figured <laughs> there out. There you go. You have to acknowledge it and recognize it to move forward. So I think this has been, I think we have learned something. Okay. There we go. Oh, is there something wrong with a man on a flight who's yelling at a baby oh who's, my who's crying? Is that okay? <laughs> Did you, you guys are... <laughs> I, I don't know if she heard about this. There, there oh, was yeah. a man... On a Southwest flight. Uh, and it's going viral, this video. He he lost his mind just yelling because this baby had been crying. And so he was cussing and yelling and the flight oh attendant gosh. was trying to get him to calm down. I know. It's it's like he snapped. There is something wrong with that guy. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he was in such a stressed out state that he the he was totally reactive to, to what was going on around him. Yeah. 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 Well... Yeah, I guess he needed to calm down. That's the he, worst well, thing. He needed an earworm. He to needed, distract him. He needed an Try earworm. Try singing this song, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, one last thing for you. What, how come when you tell somebody to calm down, that doesn't work? Well, that's a good question. Some, but I find sometimes it does. You know, it's okay. not what you say. It's how you say it. Okay. And, if, and if, you know, Chris, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee. I will do my best. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. That is Lee Richardson, founder and clinical director of the Brain Performance Center.